after doing the nonlinear programming for maximization now we can do it for minimization so primarily we should understand the Kahn Tucker conditions for minimization and then we can apply it on an economic situation where minimization is to be done now again we can assume any general number of variables in this case and then the number of conditions will be also equal to that certain number if it is m for example or n it will be equal to that number it can be two variables three variables or up to any number of variables the first set of conditions would be variable based and then the other one would be multiplier based as we have already seen in the maximization application of nonlinear programming so the first term here is this one that is the second term if we look at it it is the derivative of the Lagrangian function with respect to the independent variables and this is the non-negativity condition of the independent variables and if the product of these two terms is equal to zero then either or both of them will be equal to zero which in other words can be considered as a situation of complementary slackness that we have tried to explain in the maximization application of the nonlinear programming now these numbers can be explained that is the j value can span from one to any positive number the multiplier based conditions will also be similar to the maximization condition here uh, the same calculation can be done by like, uh, differentiating the Lagrangian function the with respect to the Lagrangian multipliers and all of them should be positive and if they are positive and if this term is negative then the product can be zero only if one of them is equal to zero or both of them are equal to zero so dropping these inequalities and converting them into equality means that we are trying to do the process of slackness as explained in the last video of maximization in nonlinear programming so the range of i can be from 1 to m that is numerical example the objective function is now a cost function that depends upon two inputs x1 and x2 it is nonlinear so there is a need for nonlinear programming and it has multiple constraints so it verifies that nonlinear programming is a suitable tool to apply so quadratic function is there and then we have the constraints one of them and the other of them is there non-negativity constraints they are also there because positive values are likely to happen in case of the inputs that we are using here So we can form the Lagrangian function just like we did before. There are two general constraints. So there will be two multipliers, lambda 1 and lambda 2. Respectively, this is the first constraint after inversion. And this is the second constraint after inversion. And this is the objective function. So the Lagrangian function is built in the same way that we have been doing before. The second step would be the Kahn Tucker conditions for minimization. We have s understood them generally in the beginning of this lecture, but now we will see specifically that there are two independent variables and there are two multipliers. So we can have two variable based conditions on the basis of x1 and x2 and two Lagrangian multiplier based conditions that is on the basis of lambda 1 and lambda 2 this is something we did before in the last video as well so you can refer to that to remind yourselves about its understanding now the first order conditions will be developed simply by differentiating with respect to the variables so variable based conditions and then the we can write it here variable based conditions and here the multiplier based conditions with respect to lambda 1 and with respect to lambda 2 as said before so just looking at these uh, four conditions simple algebra and uh, calculus will allow us to solve the this uh, overall function take its derivative with respect to x1 
and get this condition and then with respect to x2 solving this we will get this and then solving this expression with respect to lambda 1 differentiating we will get this and finally solving the Lagrangian function with respect to lambda 2 we will get this expression so these are the four conditions that are still in the form of inequality so we convert them into equalities by dropping the less than or greater than signs and we continue with the equalities they are equal to zero so now we can solve them there are four unknowns that is lambda 1 lambda 2 x1 and x2 and there are four equations as well and we remember that we use trial solution cases. This is the step three in the nonlinear programming. The first one of the trial solution is case one, which is multiplier based trial solution. And the second option is variable based trial solution. We will use the multiplier based trial solution first. And it f if it fails, then we can use the other, that is the variable based trial solution. The multiplier based trial solution suggests that if lambda is positive and if lambda 2 uh, is positive then in this product the other term that is the derivative term with respect to lambda 1 would be 0 and here if lambda 2 is positive then in this product this term needs to be 0 so that the complementary slackness condition happens now this is the summary that if the two multipliers are positive then these two derivatives will be zero similar holes on the right hand side if the independent variable x1 is positive then in this product this term will be zero again if x2 is positive then in this product this term must be zero so for both positive values of x1 and x2 these derivatives with respect to x1 and x2 of the Lagrangian function should be equal to zero now the trial solution case one would be used uh, in this you uh, remember that this is the first uh, option and this is the second option that we need to put equal to zero this is the value of it this is the value of it that we can see in the third condition out of the four conditions and fourth condition out of the four conditions you can refer back to the set of conditions that is these conditions these two conditions are used at this time and we can use these conditions to solve them simultaneously and come up with the unknown values of x1 and x2 let us see if we are successful in it so uh, if we solve it uh, we can extract the value of one unknown that is x1 and we can extract the value of uh, this extracted value can be substituted here or we can extract the value of x1 and equate but here what we have done is not to extract the values from both equations rather by substituting the value of x1 in the other variable so this is the value of x1 and um, you can solve this by pausing the video to simple algebra this should give you the value of x2 and now you can find the value of x1 simply by putting this value of x2 here in the value of x1 so we have done this and then you can solve this by using simple algebra and you will get the value of x1 as well now we should consider these values the value of x1 is positive however the value of x1 x2 is negative which is the violation of the non-negativity constraint which was set in the beginning that x2 cannot be negative so it can be positive or equal to zero but this is the violation as x2 is found to be negative so this combination is not suitable because it is not fulfilling the requirement of the non-negativity constraint so therefore since the trial solution case one has failed we come to the trial solution case two which is variable based trial solution as you can see x1 and x2 are considered to be positive leading to these um, derivatives with respect to x1 and x2 equal to 0 so again we can simply put the values 
the value of delta z over delta x1 is this and the value of delta z over x2 is this and uh, if we want to remember out of those four conditions this is the first equation and this is the second equation or condition you can go back to those four conditions and verify now i can extract the value of lambda from here lambda 2 for example and also of lambda 2 from the other equation and then i can equate them it is simply the matter of simultaneous equations solution that you can try and uh, you can use any other method if you want to so equating these two we will get this uh, equality and then we can try to solve it and when we solve it it will be simple algebra till now we can do this easily you can pause the video and you can see so the final expression has x1 x2 and lambda 1 we uh, we can try to find out all these values but we can do it one by one or by couple by couple that is firstly we should try to focus on x1 and x2 and then we can come to lambda 1 and lambda 2 just like we did in the case of maximization uh, uh, situation of non-linear programming in the last video so lambda 1 is not suitable in this process where we are trying to focus on the critical values of x1 and x2 so if we assume that lambda 1 is equal to 0 it can allow us to focus on x1 and x2 so we did this and when we did this the equation reduced to two unknowns which is now v uh, very much uh, handleable because the other equation that we can get will also be in terms of x1 and x2 so we have this equation that again is mentioned that it is a function of x1 and x2 so it needs another equation in terms of x1 and x2 that we can use with it and solve to get the values of x1 and x2 so we uh, use the condition of uh, the multiplier that if multiplier is positive then the Lagrangian function derivative with respect to it will be equal to zero so we have already eyed it and this will give us an equation in terms of x1 and x2 we are going back to those four equations where we can verify if we use this multiplier based condition then we will get this first order condition which has x1 and x2 so it will allow us to solve the uh, last equation simultaneously so then we are coming back to that by using that trial solution we got an equation in terms of x1 and x2 and now since we are using this condition that is multiplier based condition the second multiplier if it is equal to is positive then this is equal to zero so uh, we are borrowing the fourth equation the fourth equation is now brought back and then we can see that it is in terms of x1 and x2 but after rearrangement so this equation in terms of x1 and x2 can now be solved with this equation which is again in terms of x1 and x2 uh, putting them side by side we can solve them f x1 x2 g x1 and x2 solving for x1 and x2 so this is simple algebra that you can handle easily extracting the value of x1 putting it into the other simultaneous equation and then you can see the values visible here and simple algebra should allow you to get the value of x2 and substituting this value of x2 back here so that we could get the value of x1 that we have found here now both of the values that is x1 established and x2 established both of them are positive so they meet the non-negativity constraints so now we can go towards the other two unknowns of the simultaneous equation they are lambda 1 and lambda 2 so we are going to use the values of x1 and x2 in these two 
conditions that is the first condition and the second condition here we are going to use the so this is for your reminder the first of the uh, conditions and this is the second of the four conditions that we had and x1 status is known so we put its value finally we get an equation in terms of lambda 1 and lambda 2 and for th from that we can extract the value of lambda 1 and keep it safe and then the other constraint uh, or the uh, second equation in the four conditions that we had we can put the value of x2 and then we can solve it and when we do we get another equation in terms of lambda 1 and lambda 2 so here the value that we found of lambda 1 can be substituted and when we do so we get this expression and we can solve it you can pause the video here and see these steps we have found the value of lambda 2 by doing simple algebra and then for the value of lambda 1 we can put this value of lambda 2 that we have found into this equation so this is the solution and we have found that lambda 1 is equal to 0 so we note all these values that is the value of x1 asteris and x2 asteris and the lambdas we have noted all of their values we can use them to verify if, if these values are correct so we resort to the objective function primarily and this is the objective function in which we can put the value of x1 and x2 and then solve it so we get this level of cost which we believe is the minimized level of cost and then we come to the general constraints this was the first one this was the second one when we solve the first one by using the value of x1 and x2 it is 12.6 which as per the constraint is correct because 12.6 is greater than 6 so this satisfies the constraint and here we have the other constraint in which x1 and x2 they are substituted and when we solve them we get this value which is minus 12 which is equal to minus 12 so it is also satisfying the constraint it is not greater but it is at least equal because in an inequality we can have either of these two possibilities now negativity constraints are also met because both that is x1 and x2 they are both positive so it is also met the non-negativity constraints so all constraints are satisfied when we choose these as the critical values of x1 and x2 and in order to minimize the cost to this level this should be the values of x1 and x2 this is how we can do the non-linear programming of a uh, certain situation where we have multiple constraints where we have a non-linear function that we want to optimize and in this case it was cost minimization there was a little bit of uh, jugglery and that jugglery only had the process of solving equations simultaneously so it can be slightly intricate however it is not containing any advanced mathematical tool simply by doing the algebra we can solve these equations simultaneously and we can get to some values of the unknowns that is x1 and x2 and also the multipliers which can be used to find out the maximized or minimized value of the objective function which in this case was cost function and we were able to minimize it by going through this process of nonlinear programming. Thank you.